Well, hurricane season is here, and while we're not watching any storms right now, it's never too early to make sure your family is ready, and of course, that includes your pets. Anna Zerilla is here from the uh, Louisiana SPCA. She is the CEO of the Louisiana SPCA, and you have some tips on how we can all get ready. Good Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. Good morning. How are you? Well, first of all, tell us about Macy. So Macy is a four-month-old little terrier mix mm -hmm. puppy. Uh, she is very sweet, a little shy this morning. I think all the, the mm -hmm. great music and the smell of food just yes. is a little bit much for her. Uh, but she came in with two siblings, so mm -hmm. we have three little puppies. These cute little fuzzy face yeah. puppies. Uh, Going to be about medium sized dogs, I would mm -hmm. think, from just the looks of her paws. Uh, you know, maybe 40 pounds, 50 mm -hmm. pounds puppy. And she is ready to go. She, she is, is. She has everything she needs. She has her vaccinations, she has her microchip, and she's been spayed, so ready to go. Mm -hmm. And that microchip is such an important part of hurricane preparedness. So uh, every year, you know, we mm -hmm. want to encourage people, if your pet is not microchipped, use this time right now before there's a storm in the Gulf to go ahead and get that microchip um, inserted. And if your pet was microchipped already, Make sure the information's current. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many animals come into Louisiana SPCA with a microchip, but the phone number's wrong, or folks moved and never updated their address. Mm -hmm. And so it isn't enough just to have the microchip. You need to make sure every year you check, you have a good emergency contact, somebody mm -hmm. outside of the city, preferably, yes. that uh, their phone number will be current. And um, if something happens, if you and your pet get separated, that there's a way to get them back home. Okay, now what other things should you do in addition to having your pet microchip to get ready? So we encourage people to make sure that you have a printout of your pet's vaccinations, um, that it's current because no matter where you go when you evacuate, if you have to go to the veterinarian, if you need to board your pet, you need to have a copy of those vaccinations. Mm -hmm. Also, make sure you have all the supplies that you need. We have a great brochure. It's available on our website with a nice little checklist on it, mm -hmm. but things like making sure you have your carrier, you pack with you some extra bowls. You bring food, you bring uh, cleaning supplies so that if you have to stop and let your puppy relieve themselves that you can clean up after them. Um, mm -hmm. And that if they're on any medication that you bring that medication with you because you don't know if you'll be able to get it you know, when you're evacuated, even mm -hmm. if it's just for a few days. Mm -hmm. So bringing everything you need. And then with things like the crate, taking some time to get your puppy or your cat used to being in it. Oh. You don't want you know the evacuation to be the mm -hmm. first time that your pet mm -hmm. uh, goes into the crate because it can be pretty stressful and That's uncomfortable. That's very, very good advice there. And also you need to plan where you're going. Absolutely. So there's great resources on our website as well as on other websites about pet friendly hotels, uh, boarding facilities, other kinds of uh, mm -hmm. places that could help you with your pet. But most of those places get filled up quickly. So it's important for you to know where you're going to go, that your pet is going to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And if you're staying with family or friends, having that conversation in advance and making sure they're okay with your pets joining the household because mm -hmm. you don't want to make that assumption and get there and then it turns out, mm -hmm. you know, there's a problem with your pet. Uh, being there. Yeah, and also you just want to make sure that you, you make plans for your pet because you shouldn't leave your pet behind. No, if there's anything we learned in Hurricane Katrina was that um, we just don't know when a mm -hmm. storm is coming, how long will we be gone, how quickly yeah. can we get back to the city, and so many animals died because you know, yeah. no one expected to be gone as long as we were. The city of New Orleans has uh, resources available, so individuals that don't have transportation for themselves and have pets uh, can register with the city so you can call 311 and make sure that your information is current with the city so that if the city assists you with evacuation, the Louisiana SPCA will assist with making sure that your pet is also able to evacuate and you both are moved to the same shelters and are able to come back once it's safe to be back in the city. Well, we have learned so much from you today. Thank you, Anna oh, Zarella, for you. being here. And for a full list of the items you need to prepare for your pet in the event of an evacuation, you can check out the Louisiana SPCA's website. Just log on to www.tv.com and click on links on 4.